do enough to bring fiscal sanity to Washington. Senator Rand Paul, Republican of Kentucky, is with us this evening. Senator Paul, the conservatives in the House can't round up the votes to pass their plan. Speaker Reid probably has 52 or 53 for his, but he doesn't have the 60 votes he would need to get it through the Senate. We are days away from a potential default. Would you prefer default to either of these two plans? No, but the interesting thing is the conservatives did round up the votes. The conservatives in the Senate and the House, we got 234 votes in the House last week for cut, cap, and balance to balance the budget and to raise the debt ceiling the full two trillion exactly what the president wants so it's interesting the dynamic here because some are saying we're unwilling to compromise we already offered the president two trillion dollar increase in the debt ceiling all we want in exchange is a balanced budget amendment to the constitution you have made that point, and the Republicans have been very clear that you also won't accept the tax increases, the some of the tax increases the president would want. He would call them revenue increases. As this plays out, as you know, we've seen a generational split in the Republican Party. Some of what I'll call the old guard, uh, folks who've been here a while say, you know what, we need to get this done. We can't let the United States default for the first time in its history. As part of this debate, uh, Senator John McCain, who just two and a half years ago was the Republican nominee for president, was on the floor of the Senate yesterday. He was saying that, look, you don't have the votes to get a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution so that new members like you should put that aside and be willing to move on. I want you to listen to Senator McCain as he read from an editorial here in making his case from the Wall Street Journal. Then Democrats would have no choice but to pass a balanced budget amendment and reform entitlements and the Tea Party hobbits could return to Middle Earth having defeated Mordor. This is the kind of crack political thinking that turns Sharon Angle and Christine O'Donnell into GOP Senate nominees. Uh, you were a member of the new Tea Party class. Uh, Christine O'Donnell and Sharon Angle didn't make it. You did. What's your message to Senator McCain? Well, not directly to him, but to those who love Lords of the Ring, I would say, you know, I'd rather be a hobbit than a troll. And the hobbits were the good guys. They were the heroes in the battle for Middle Earth between good and evil. And there is a certain amount of good and evil up here in the sense that I think it is evil to put these bills on to the next generation and not pay them now. The reason I'm against the Boehner plan and against the Reed plan is both of them will add seven to eight trillion dollars of debt over the next 10 years. And I don't think we have 10 years to add trillions more debt to the country. And so help us understand, you're not going to get, you made the case before for cut, cap, and balance. Uh, the president says he won't sign it. Leader Reid won't bring it to the floor in the Senate. Uh, he has that power and authority. The president has a veto pen. So to somebody in your home state of Kentucky or anybody else watching, no matter their political persuasion, who, if we default, might see higher interest rates, might see a hit to an already struggling job market, what is Senator Paul's message for them about how would you get us out of this? I'm still willing to negotiate. Ours is the only plan that's passed any House. So give us some credit for actually getting together a coalition of Republicans and Democrats and we pass the House. I'm willing to talk to the President. I sent a letter to the President today. I'm willing to accept most of what he wants. Cuts, the caps he wants, and I'm willing to give him beyond. I know he's concerned about having time to fundraise. I'm willing to let him get out on the campaign trail and fundraise and not have to worry about this. We'll give him $2 trillion all we want is a promise that we will balance the budget and it'll be over a seven to eight year period is that too much to ask senator Rand paul of kentucky appreciate your time tonight you raised the question at the end let's put it right now to gene sperling at the white house he's the president's director 